Good afternoon, I'm Kristen Bandy with Arkansas Children's and I'm here today with Dr. Madison Howell from the Audiology Department. It's Better Speech and Hearing Month mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about the importance of having your child's hearing screened. How are you? I'm good, Kristen. Thanks so much for having me today. Thank you for joining yeah. us. So why don't we start out, tell us a little bit about what you do here at Arkansas sure. Children's. So I am a pediatric audiologist at Children's, which basically means I get to test kids' hearing. And I also do hearing aids. Our department does cochlear implants. We do hearing tests for all ages. So we test just a few day old, even sometimes hours old babies, all the way up to a child turning you know, 18 and, and going out from the house. So um, we get to work with a variety of patients here and it's a really fun job to get to work with kids and um, help them get better hearing. I love it, that's great. It's a fun department. I'm it walking is. through the hall, they seem to be having a lot of fun back here. We do. So let's let's talk about how is hearing loss diagnosed in children? <coughs> yeah. I know you mentioned you screen newborn babies, mm -hmm. but you know, how is it how is it the process? Yeah, and you know, going off that question, there's kind of several different ages that we see, like I said. So for a, an infant or a newborn, it is um, an, a law that they receive a newborn hearing screening. So every birth hospital should be screening infants for hearing. Um, so essentially that test is we are putting electrodes on the baby's forehead, playing sounds into their ears, and looking for the brain's response to the sound. I and never knew that. Yeah. Both my kids had it and I didn't yeah. know that that's actually how it happened. So, that's you know, an, an infant can't raise their hand when they <laughs> hear the sounds for us. Um, so, you know, it can look a little scary, especially for some parents. We're, we're sticking stickers on the right. forehead, but it, it does not hurt. It's not invasive. It's just playing sounds and looking for the brain to respond to those sounds so that we can rule out any significant hearing loss. Um, now, if the infant does not pass the newborn hearing screening, there is an opportunity for a re screening. So after they're discharged from the birth hospital, a few weeks later, they would come to a facility like our hospital here and have that screening repeated just to see, you know, was there some fluid left in their ears mm -hmm. from the birthing process? You know, was the um, equipment not functioning appropriately? Just to double check. And if they're still not passing at that point, then we do a full diagnostic ABR, auditory brainstem response test. And that is where we're actually playing lots of different pitches and frequencies, and we're measuring exactly what that infant can hear through those electrodes by watching how the brain responds. So um, ideally with an infant, we want to have all their screenings done by one month of age. Mm -hmm. We want the full diagnostic test. We wanna really know how they're hearing by three months of age if they haven't passed the first screening. And then the goal is by six months of age to intervene or, or if they need hearing aids um, to make sure that process is started. So that would be more the infants. Mm -hmm. Now we also see kids of all ages. So when we're talking about older kids, a lot of those kids come to us from a failed hearing screening, which would be at school or the pediatrician's office. They kind of do a, a modified quicker screening test. And if they don't pass that, then they would be referred to us. And that's where they come here to a sound room like this and we do a full diagnostic test to see how their hearing is. Is that hearing screening at the pediatrician, is that typically part of a wellness visit or is it a separate visit? It should be a part of a wellness visit. Um, you know, it's not always a standard well child uh, check for every single visit to do a hearing screening. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we see it when they're getting to preschool age and, and a preschool might require that for like a physical to go to school. Right. Um, kindergarten is another one that we see a lot of screenings happening at the pediatrician to go to kindergarten. But if you're ever concerned about hearing, ask the pediatrician to do a hearing screening and they should be able to. Gotcha. So how common is hearing loss in children? It's actually a lot more common than people think. About every two to three kids out of a thousand kids wow. have hearing loss. So wow. um, that's a lot. You know, it is a lot. You think about your average elementary school might be a thousand to two thousand kids. We're talking about, you know, five to ten kids at that school who have hearing loss. Wow. So and do you always catch it at the newborn screening or does it happen that it happens after the fact. Sure. Can it and, and you know, that's, yeah, it, it's exactly like that. It can happen afterwards. So there's two different types of hearing loss in childhood that we see. There's congenital, which means they're born with hearing loss. And then there's also progressive or acquired, which means it happens later in life. Mm -hmm. So the newborn hearing screening is great. Um, it was implemented in the 90s, and we've definitely caught a lot more kids born with hearing loss since then. Right. However, it's not perfect. We still do miss some, and there are some kids who the hearing loss actually comes later in later life. Later on. So, um, and that's without an accident mm -hmm. or anything. It just it yeah. was okay when they were born, and then it 
And yeah, and typically, it. yeah, so like a progressive hearing loss would maybe be a genetic hearing loss. Um, there might be other members of the family who had hearing loss that developed later, but it can also be from an accident, um, you know, a, a head trauma or an illness that could have damaged the ears. Right. So why is it important, you know, you get, you get it done at newborn mm -hmm. and then you get it again at kindergarten. Why is it so important to make sure that your child gets that hearing screening? Sure. It's partly just because you never know what's going to happen. Right. Um, they may have passed newborn hearing screening, and like I said, something could have happened between then and that screening that they had done a few years later. They could have acquired hearing loss. There could have been an illness that affected the ears, and um, you know, it's it's still just a screening. The newborn hearing screening is exactly that. It's it's not going to. Um, rule out all types of hearing loss, it definitely rules out anything significant. Mm -hmm. But there might still be some mild or slight hearing loss right. that was present there that they still pass the screening, but maybe not until they're a little older, like three or four, and you're starting to notice they're not saying some words right, or they're talking really loud, or right. maybe they're turning that TV volume up to the point where you're covering your ears. Um, those could all be signs that they have potentially some hearing loss and, and need a hearing screening. And while we're discussing that, what are some other signs that parents can be on the lookout for? Yeah. You know, if they are concerned. Sure. Outside of turning the TV up way too loud, which <laughs> I'm guilty of. But. And, and that, that's a hard one. That's a hard it, one. It can be a little behavioral too, but, um, you know, definitely speech and language is a huge indicator of hearing problems. So if you're worried that your child may not be meeting speech and language milestones, so for instance, you know, by 18 months, we want a child to be saying roughly 20 to 50 words by 24 months or, or two years old, we're getting up to about 200 words. We're starting to put two word phrases together like um, eat more, mm -hmm. want please. If you're not seeing those milestones being met, it could be that your child's not hearing the speech properly in order to produce it. So that's mm -hmm. one really big indicator. Um, we also see kids who have hearing loss struggle with attention. So, um, you know, if you're not able to hear something, you're not going to attend or focus on it as right. much. So attention concerns, um, you know, we do see a lot of people referring to us to rule out hearing loss before they diagnose attention deficit disorder mm -hmm. and other attention related things. So that's definitely something to look for. Um, mm -hmm. If your kid's just asking, huh, what, and things like that, a little more than normal, right. then I would definitely talk with the pediatrician about a hearing screening. It's so hard because a lot of the things that we're talking about seem to be typical kid behavior <laughs> that as parents yeah. we expect, but I get it's watching and paying attention to how often these things are happening. Yes. That's, so tell me, if a, if a child has a hearing issue that is not properly diagnosed, how can that negatively impact them Sure. In their day-to-day. -day. Sure. You know, it, it's, it gets several factors. Um, for sure, speech and language delay. We see a lot of that. Um, and then academically, they'll start to struggle. You know, mm -hmm. early on kindergarten, we're not learning too difficult a material yet. But once we start to see kids learning to read and write, literacy starts to fall behind because they may not be able to hear all those speech sounds. I right. think, Kristen, that's one thing people don't understand about hearing loss is, a lot of people either think you're hearing or you're deaf, but right. there's a very big spectrum. So right. for some kids, they might hear low frequency speech sounds like mmm or b, b, those kind of speech sounds, but higher pitched speech sounds like s or t or ch, those are harder for them to hear. So if you think about it, if I took away some speech sounds that you couldn't hear, reading and writing would be really hard. Right. <laughs> and so we see a lot of kids that have hearing loss struggle with literacy and start falling behind in school. I would imagine they get into trouble a lot more, mm -hmm. teachers and parents, if they don't realize they have hearing loss and they're yeah. constantly getting onto them. That's yes. not great for their yes. mental well-being either. Now, mind you, sometimes it's just they're misbehaving. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it is. Sometimes I'm not listening <clears throat> yes. to. Yes. So I get it. Yes. We definitely do see. Um, you know, a lot of parents coming and saying, oh my gosh, I, I really thought they just were not listening to me or, or not wanting I, to behave. I can see that mm -hmm. as a parent. Like I can yeah. see that that would be your immediate response because you don't think outside of what else could be going on, right. which is why hearing screenings are so important. It is. Right? Yeah. So, um, the hearing screen you said takes place at school mm -hmm. typically or at the pediatrician's mm -hmm. office. And if you're ever concerned, you can just let your doctor know, hey, let's just get this checked out. What happens next? Yeah. What happens if they find something? 
how sure. do they end up here? Sure. So, you know, a hearing screening, again, it's not going to give you a full diagnostic um, result. So it's mostly a pass or a fail. And that doesn't tell you what they're hearing or what they're not hearing. So right. we do have a lot of parents who come in and, and hear that their child failed a screening and they think, oh, he can't hear anything at all. Right. It does not necessarily mean that. Um, we do see lots of kids that come here for a diagnostic test that end up having completely normal hearing. Um, but when we do a full diagnostic test, you come up for a school age child, you come into a sound room like this and um, we talk to you a little bit about your case history, you know, we like to know about birth history because there's some risk factors, you know, mm -hmm. did they stay a long time in the NICU, were they on any high um, dose antibiotics as an infant, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then um, we do a hearing game. And mm -hmm. this is where the fun comes yeah, for our it's job. It's a game. My yes. ears perk up. What are we going to do? So, you know, there's different different ways we test hearing. For a younger child, that's going to be about six months to two years old, we play a game where we're playing sounds in the room and we're expecting the infant to turn and look when they hear the sound. Mm -hmm. um, we have some little toys that light up and animals, and um, that's kind of what that box is behind you. Oh, yeah. And um, so that's how we test infants' hearing. And then children, we make it a little more fun. So we usually try to put headphones on, which some kids can get a little bit nervous about. So one thing um, you can do with your child at home before you come to your appointment is try practicing putting on headphones. That's a great tip. It can really help. Um, and because really we'd love to get the full test with headphones on. And then we um, have lots of different games. So we might say, okay, you know, I want you to pop the popper every time you hear the sound, or I want you to throw the toy in the bucket. So we try to make it more fun than just raising right. your hand or pressing a button. Um, we love having lots of toys in our clinic so if your child has a favorite toy you could definitely bring it with you to your appointment that might help us get really good results mm -hmm. um, but we we are playing lots of different pitches at different volumes trying to figure out exactly what the child can hear and can't hear and then the cool thing about our clinic is we go over results that day with the family so oh, that's you, awesome. you leave knowing no stressful two or three days <laughs> there's of not waiting no now sometimes, sometimes sometimes we don't always get the full test and we right. have to bring you back but for the most part you can leave knowing the answers that day That's awesome um, so it's, it's a really nice thing to give parents that peace of mind yes I love that as someone with a lot of anxiety that would be incredibly helpful yes so yes. this is the booth that mm -hmm. you do all the testing in. yes and typically you'll be over here so we start out in the room with the patient okay. you know part of working with kids is just building that relationship right. and that trust so um, that's why we have lots of toys we, we get out so things. when you do the toys you're here mm -hmm. with them yes. and this is just a separate and then you know we, we do go over to this side you can kind of see this box here is where I would be pressing buttons to play all the sounds in the room mm -hmm. um, sometimes it takes two of us so sometimes yes. we might bring in another audiologist just to try to um, get really good results and make it more fun to have someone here in the booth as well as someone doing the testing on that side. Yeah. We are equipped to do some testing in here too. That machine behind you is actually also an audiometer that can make sounds. So for some of the older kids, I can actually just do my full test in here with oh, nice. them. Yeah. Um, but we love, you know, building relationships with the patients and the families and, and hearing their concerns face to face. And so that's why it's so important for us to be in here with them. And then once they, once they come in, you kind of see them for the rest of <laughs> into teenager, yeah, though, right? Yeah. So I think, you know, back to one of the questions you had said was, you know, what happens if you do have hearing loss? Right. So if a child does have hearing loss, we talk about the options. So typically we um, want you to see an ear, nose, and throat specialist, an ENT doctor. We have those here at our hospital. Some people go to different facilities, but we always want you to see one to rule out anything in the inner ear right. or structures that could be causing that, that we could potentially fix um, and to rule out anything else going on. And then if there is permanent hearing loss, we would talk about hearing aids or cochlear implants. So what I love, what I'm hearing is that you are very thorough. Mm -hmm. We are checking to make sure there's not something going on in the brain yeah. and in the ears and everything. And I yeah. love as a parent to hear <laughs> how incredibly thorough we yeah. are instead of just assuming it's one thing. And yeah, I love that. And it's really neat because here, especially at Children's, you can do all of that in, in one location. One so location. That it's is not uncommon for our, our kids who do have hearing loss to be seeing audiology, going to see ENT, and then mm -hmm. part of Better Speech and Hearing Month is also speech. And so mm -hmm. we actually have speech therapists who work with our hearing impaired kids as well. So um, we really take a full team approach and right. it's open communication with all team members. So um, definitely, you know, 
I think it gives parents peace of mind when they hear of a child fail at a hearing screening mm -hmm. to know that they're going somewhere they can get answers. Right. Yeah. From all kinds of different yeah. specialties, too. I For love sure. that. So I can tell you're incredibly passionate about your job. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part about your job? <laughs> if you can pick one thing. It's a hard question. <laughs> you can pick five <laughs> things. We've got time. You can um, tell us all the things. You know, <laughs> I think if you'd asked me at different stages of my career, I'd probably answer differently. Right. But I think coming out of COVID and getting to see patients again, one of my favorite things is um, getting to change a child's perspective on coming to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So we are a fun clinic. We get to have fun. There's not really anything in here that hurts or is ouchy. Right. Um, and, and I have a lot of kids that walk in the door you see those tears start up. They're nervous. They're a little bit scared, but getting to help um, them them see that a hospital is not always a bad place to be right. is really cool. Um, of course, getting to help a child hear for the first time is magical, and getting to see a baby hear their mom's voice is incredible. But yeah. um, how do you keep from crying, or do you just let it go? You let it go. You, you just know, let it. I just let it. Flow. I think that's something that's really important when you're talking about. Um, children is understanding that parents need you to be real with them yes. and, and that's part of our job and we get to share in that magic and if that means that I get a little emotional I think that is um, the parents appreciate that I'll, and you get to be part of such a special moment mm -hmm. in their life that they'll never forget yeah. that's just pretty amazing yeah and it, I also would have to say another cool thing I I've only been here four years so I haven't got to experience this yet but I have lots of co-workers here who have been here a long time and hearing them talk about diagnosing an infant mm -hmm. with hearing loss who, had that not been diagnosed and treated, probably would never really be able to communicate orally. They would have been right. a, a sign language user, which we have great success with those kids too, but getting to see those patients graduate from high school and go to college and mm -hmm. get a job and um, go on to do big things is also a really cool part of working with kids. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. In you know, I know a lot of wellness checks were missed during COVID mm -hmm. when everything was shut down. So it's really important if your child hasn't gotten a hearing screening that you make that appointment or just let your doctor know the next time you're there that you'd like to, to have them checked out. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Howell, Thanks, for, having, for being here. And everybody have a great afternoon.